Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up for restoring this week is a Matchbox Lesney number 42A Evening News Van. These were made by Lesney in uh, 1957. Um, this is one of the earlier metal wheel models uh, with a uh, roof A type support. Um, when I came across this model, uh, I thought it was, you know, in pretty decent shape. Obviously, it's missing quite a few of the decals. And uh, I figured this was a good candidate for preservation rather than restoration. So that's what we're going to do today. So upon my first evaluation of this model, you can see uh, there's some chips in the paint. Um, I've got a remnant of the original evening news decal on there that's probably going to have to come off in order for us to put the new ones on. The back looks pretty good. Um, some play wear on the high spots. Uh, you can see the rails above the side windows have quite a bit of wear on them and we're going to have to try to see if we can address those. The bottom looks uh, pretty good. Um, it's a little bit dirty and there's a few just little chips or nicks missing from the paint there. I'll probably leave those alone. So to start out with this restoration, I'm just giving it a good clean with some soapy water and my More Power electric toothbrush. Um, this is the Ninja Turtle model. See if you can uh, find your your own if you want to want to do that. Um, but I like using just plain water and a little Dawn dish soap. Um, gets kind of all the grease from fingers, all the crud and everything else that came through all the years that this model's seen so far um, but you know after you get it really good and cleaned up it that also tells me if there's any like little loose chips of paint or anything uh, that needs a little more work on it and I think that's one of the the lines between uh, preservation and restoration is um, I'm not looking to totally change this model I'm just looking to preserve it for you know, a few more years into the future. So to get rid of that decal, I'm gonna to need to give it a good soak on that side. So after that's had a couple minutes to set, I wanna make sure that I'm not using anything that's too abrasive. And so I'm going with just a, a toothpick here, um, just to kind of scratch at that. If it's not loose, um, I'd put it back in, let it soak for a little bit longer. But as you can see here, um, with just a little bit of gentle pressure along the edges of that original water transfer, it's uh, starting to chip off and come loose. And that's what I was hoping. I wanted to remove the decal and really try not to harm the paint that was underneath it. Because um, original paint is only original once. So when I looked at the axles on this model, um, there's a fair amount of rust from the original steel axles. You can see it on the crimped ends there. And then there's a fair amount of rust that actually builds up between the wheel and the axle. And it gives the original metal wheels this kind of orangey-red uh, halo around the center hub. And so my method to remove that is usually just to give it a soak for a few minutes in a little white vinegar. Um, and that generally will not hurt the paint. Um, and I mean, if you leave it in overnight or something, it could because you know the vinegar is an acid, but um, it works really, really great for the rust removal. Um, and just a little light brushing through there will clear most of that up. To do the paint touch ups on this model, I'm using uh, Tester's Gloss Yellow. Um, and I looked through quite a few of the different options in the aisle uh, when I grabbed this and I brought the car with me so I could kind of do a comparison and this is if not an exact as close to an exact match as I could find um, and so in this particular case for this earlier model it is a true yellow it's not the orangey yellow um, I didn't have to mix anything I was able to use this just straight out of the jar um, I like using testers this is uh, the testers enamel um, I believe enamel paints are what Lesney probably originally used in the factory on these. And uh, 
I don't prime my models as you know all the videos I've seen of the production lines of these cars coming out from Wesney uh, they weren't primed uh, the paint was just applied directly um, so that's what I'm doing here I'm also trying to build the paint up thick enough as you can see when when these chips occur um, there, there's actually kind of a void I mean there's a cavity there where the paint comes off and so it's not just restoring the color but also the finish and so in in some cases I do actually need to apply multiple layers um, I may you know put down an initial um, layer especially right here over these headlights uh, that's a, a pretty deep crack uh, or chip in there and that's quite a, a big void to fill. Um, so I'll put a first layer on, uh, you know, a thinner layer. I'll let that set up for a little bit. Um, and then after it's dried or cured out, I'll come back and uh, build up a second layer on that. Really just trying to fill in those, those chips um, or voids to bring that back to the same level. And here on the corner of the bumper, you can see that's a really deep chip in that paint so I'm, I'm eventually going to paint the bumper silver and all that um, but true to the way Lesney did these I'm going to lay down a yellow layer first um, also that helps me fill in the depth of that crack that void that's there and uh, I'll be able to build up on top of it with my silver um, as you can see I think I've got a pretty good color match here uh, to the original yellow. Got one little spot here on the bumper I still want to get. But uh, overall, I was pretty impressed with that. You also want to work really careful. As you can see, I, I just uh, stuck my finger in that first little chip that I repaired. I have to go back and touch that up now. Um, and that's, you know, that's one of those things where a lot of times... Um, you know, stuff like this wouldn't happen if I weren't wasn't trying to do this for the camera. Um, but you know, sharing, doing uh, the process, and doing these restorations is part of what I enjoy about this hobby too. So here you'll see on the on the A pillar up front there, uh, I've got another little chip, um, and really across the top of this model is is where most of that play where is down that signage band we're gonna to get to that in a minute on the driver's side we've got another pretty good size chip this is probably the the worst area of this model and uh, as you can see I'm only hitting the areas where the paint is removed um, again I think this is kinda of one of those lines uh, that's that's different between a restoration and a preservation. Um, I'm not trying to completely restore this model. I, I want to leave as much of the original paint intact as I can. Um, just going back in and you know putting back some of what uh, some years of playwear has taken off of this model. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Sometimes knowing just when to stop is uh, part of the most difficult pieces of this. Um, I I can always go back and you know build up a little bit more in another layer if I need to. And remember, I don't want this thing to look completely mint new. Um, you know, I'm not trying to go. Um, factory original on this um, you know it is old I want I still want it to look old um, I just want to address some of the kind of the biggest condition issues and um, as I said you know this top of this sign band up here that is uh, really the most prominent the most noticeable um, of the damage on this model and so for sure and I think this is probably actually going to take uh, multiple coats just due to the the size of some of these chips this will be a good uh, first brush at it and um, start building up those layers 
you can really see kind of from the edge there um, the the height change where some of those uh, chips are. So that's probably going to take a, a second coat along some of those low spots. Um, on the sides of the band, I do want to get, you know, any chips or nicks that would show through the decal, but I'm not terribly concerned about making those sides absolutely perfect because we are going to cover them up with the, the replacement uh, decal, the replacement artwork. Now that that uh, front headlight has had, the first layer's had a little bit of time to dry, I'm going to come back and try to build up and hit the second layer on top of that now on some of those deeper cracks. Here you can see on the back of the model, I'm um, doing a little bit of touch up on the bumpers. Um, there was some pretty, pretty big chips, especially kind of down on the underside of the bumper. Um, but again, I don't want to remove all the detail. I still want the lines in the doors to be visible. Um, I, I'm not trying to make it look factory fresh, just, uh, just preserved. So I'm going to touch up kind of the worst areas that are there, the biggest chips, nicks, scratches, um, kind of blend those out. Another technique that I have to, to use on these a lot of times is more of a thinned out or a watered down wash. Once I get the, the biggest chips and cracks filled, um, a lot of times I'll come back and just do a very, very light coat or a wash um, with a thinned down version of that color. And that kind of evens out the difference between um, the repairs or the touch-ups and the original factory paint uh, because I don't want it to look like it's been touched up. I uh, had a couple little spots up here on the hood. Um, again, i got to be really, really careful on these really prominent pieces, really visible parts of the model that uh, I don't get it too thick because I, I don't want it to look like it's been touched up. When I hit those headlights one more time here, uh, as I said, those were some pretty deep uh, chips on the front of the paint, and they're going to take a couple layers to build back up to be the same as the factory. So I let that cure overnight, um, and again, having patience with some of this is really, really important. Uh, the enamel paints that I use do take a little bit longer to dry but they are a lot harder, more durable uh, finish. Um, and I believe that's probably why Lesney used them, um, hoping that you know they would last longer under uh, play wear. Um, I'm using a, a Tester's uh, aluminum gray paint. I find that that's, it's a little bit darker than the original Lesney factory paint, um, but it's super easy to work with. And it's got just the right level of metallic uh, to what the factory originals were. I've tried a couple different paint pens, um, and you know those are nice, especially if I'm looking for the shinier kind of the chrome look finish that was on some of the later models. Uh, I absolutely would use the pens, but for this model, trying to find that kind of hard to hit. Lesney Factory Gray. Um, this seems to be a pretty good match. On the corners of the bumper here, you can see the initial touch-up that I did in yellow now has pushed the, the surface of that paint out flush. We filled in that gap from the chip that was missing from the original factory finish. And now, when I come over with my silver, um, it's actually really going to match very closely to the uh, Lesney factory finish. Um, you know, you can tell when you look at those models that the silver was applied 
over the top of the yellow. And so that's that's what I want this to look like is um, the the same process, the same method. Now I'm I'm spending way more time on this than the ladies on the Lesney factory ever got. Um, and I think a lot of these were actually probably done with a shield where there'd be a, some type of metal with a cutout where they'd stick it on the front of the car and they'd just, you know, spray right across it. And uh, whatever went past the shield hit the car and, and got put on. And um, it, like I said, that's just my guess. Um, if anybody has any information on that uh, or can help me out with sort of the the history on these, um, what kind of paints were used. I'd love to learn more about that. Um, on the bottom, you see I'm touching up the corners a little bit, uh, again, where it was chipped, where I'm guessing it would have gone. But these weren't painted all the way across the bottom. Um, again, leading to that, my assumption that it was probably some kind of a shield, because uh, you could see kind of right where that spray goes up to. So that looks... Actually pretty good. Um, really, really happy with uh, the way that that's turning out. For the replacement decals, um, I went to uh, MK Model Parts. Um, they've been kind of my preferred source. Uh, got really, really good prices and fast shipping. Um, I believe they are in the Netherlands, so really any of the any of my UK viewers, anybody in Europe um, can get those. And even though uh, I'm buying in pounds um, or uh, euros, I, I think maybe they use euros, um, but there's some cu currency conversion there. But even with the currency conversion, uh, the prices that I'm getting from them tend to be a little bit better than uh, some of the other um restoration parts and pieces that uh, some of the other the co other companies that I've used. So I've been very happy with them. Uh, the only thing that uh, I disliked about these water transfers, and I don't know how you do it unless you do it on separate sheets, is um, the side stickers. Uh, all of these are on a clear background, and on the original model, the side stickers are on a white background. Um, so the the evening news and the top signage banner, um, those are unclear and they should be unclear. But for the decals on the doors, um, those should be on white and these are not. And so in order to be able to use these, um, I'm just simply going to paint that square on the side of the door white. So as you can see, it took uh, about two, three layers on that top signage band with touch-ups, um, two layers on the headlight areas that were really badly chipped. Um, and you see on that rail there, there's still one little spot where there's just kind of the hint of a shadow. But I think if I built it up any thicker, it would be really obvious that that was a, a, a touch-up or a, a paint repair uh, spot. So... I'm willing to live with it how it is. Uh, front grill turned out really nice. Really happy with that. Um, and you can see I left the bottom alone. I thought about doing a little touch up on the scratches. And uh, again, just in the interest of keeping this original, this few little areas of chips there, um, it doesn't bother me that much. And it, it really, I think, shows that this is more of that preservation piece rather than a full restoration. So you can see our decal's already loose on the paper. Um, I I had to tend to have pretty good luck with these, um, and they really they release pretty quickly. Uh, to line these up, I'm going to start with that little dome hump in the middle um, to get it centered, and then I'll make some adjustments once I get it off of my paper. Ah, it's starting to roll in the end there. Um, these uh, these decals have also been fairly forgiving. They give me quite a bit of working time. Hitting the other side here, same sort of thing. You know, you want to wet your surface, get a little water on the top so that you've got a little more working time as these go down. Um, this one I'm going to really try to hold that center point 
and see just how closely I can get that on there. I kind of get it positioned and then just pull the paper out from underneath. And that was not bad. I think uh, I'd make a few little adjustments here just to pull it down. I want to make sure that it's centered on the overall signage band. And I pulled in a couple of my other models. I do have a uh, uh, an excellent condition original model on this. So kind of using that as comparison to go back and forth uh, between the new decals and what the originals looked like. Um, and once I'm happy with the position, I like to use a, a Q-tip or cotton bud kind of roll out all that excess moisture that'll help it stick um, and really the the same patience you need with the painting on these um, it applies to the, the decals as well you know when I get started I like to just roll through and do them all and um, sometimes it just doesn't work um, so in this case I'm actually doing these top two and then I'm going to let these sit for a couple hours and completely dry and set up before I come back and uh, try to do the side decals. So here you can see all of our final decals applied. Uh, we've got the first with the news restored to the top, evening news on the side, and uh, the back. You can see the uh, the doors. I had to do the white underpaint, um, and I just used a uh, tester's flat white on those um, before I laid down our the the new decal. So, comparing our preserved model with my mint original, our near mint original, um, you can see that the door signage is a little different. Um, the front, really happy with how these turned out. That looks really good. Same with the back. I've got still a few, you know, little edges showing on those doors where it would be play worn. Um, and uh, again on this side you see the football signage on the door a little bit different from the the aftermarket um, water transfers but overall um, you know compared to the model I started with it was sans all water transfers um, I think this is much improved I just want to remind you all where we started at with uh, the preservation of the number 42A Bedford Evening News van. The original model was uh, pretty well loved by whatever child owned this. And uh, the, the model shows that heavy play wear on the edges, some big uh, chips and cracks along the A pillar and the signage band at the top, and uh, missing all the original decals. And here we have our preserved model. I think it's uh, our responsibility as collectors and as restorers that uh, we get these original models that come up that need a little help that, you know, we can fix them. We can preserve them without doing a total strip and a restore. So I want to thank you so much for joining me this week on Vintage Diecast Restoration. I hope you uh, enjoyed the preservation of this number 42A evening news van. And um, hope that you'll uh, give us a like, comment, and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of our future videos. Thanks so much for joining me. See you next week on Vintage Diecast Restoration.